Hey, what's going on YouTube, Alabama Reloader here. So today's video, so to kind of borrow an intro from Hootie Who, this is about to be a really fun video. Um, so what are we looking at here? The, today's video is kind of gonna be the beginning of sort of a side-by-side -side comparison of a couple of different rifles, um, rifle models, right? Rifle manufacturers with, uh, couple of different models that are geared towards people who are looking at purchasing a lightweight hunting rifle okay and and it's an interesting sort of topic I guess or so, sort of area of the gun <clears throat> of the gun world because the lighter you go in your rifle platform or the rifle setup, it's almost like exponentially more expensive. And and really a lot of that has to do with the materials that are used in the construction of the rifle. A lot of them you're gonna see carbon fiber, this, that, and the other, and all types of lightweight materials. And it adds an insane amount of cost to the overall um, purchase price, which is simply unattainable for the vast majority of the people that I, I would imagine that actually watch my videos that are subscribed to me you're probably like me you work a regular job you've got a wife kids you've got bills that you got to pay you've probably got debt out the wazoo who knows but you know you don't just have a ton of money to go and spend especially with inflation eating into basically every aspect of your of your purchasing power right from groceries gas you name it everything's more expensive nowadays and and so the last thing you really want to do is go drop a ton of unnecessary money uh, if you don't have to. And so that's kind of what this uh, these videos are going to be geared geared towards. I, I don't really know how many videos they're going to be, but or how many I'm going to make on this topic. But I just wanted to kind of sort of introduce this and, and l give you guys my take on two of the best budget, and that that is definitely in air quotes version of a lightweight hunting rifle. So so what we have here on the top is the Kimber 84M Hunter edition and that's in 65 Creedmoor. So that's this guy right here. Then on the bottom is a Tika T3X Super Light and this is actually chambered in 270 Winchester. The numbers that I'm going to be reading off to you for comparison's sake the I'm using Tika T3X Super Light 6.5 Creedmoor numbers, right? So it's just apples to apples comparison if you're going to be looking at a 6.5 Creedmoor because that sort of leads into another discussion when you go and pick the cartridge that you want to hunt with, right? If you're going into a lightweight platform, which by the way, uh, according to Tika on their website, they put this at like 6.2 pounds and then that is a five and a half pound rifle. These are bare rifle numbers, right? Coming from Coming from these manufacturers. Um, actually Tika, Tika's 5.9 pounds. Yeah, 5.9 pounds. And the Kimber is five and a half pounds. So 5.5 pounds, 5.9 pounds, right? That's the difference. And that's just bare rifle, you know, not loaded, no scope, no nothing, right? Just bare rifle. Um, because that cartridge selection is going to it's it's a much bigger deal when you're getting down into the sub like seven and eight pound rifle range. Once you get down below that and you're talking about six, you're talking about five and a half and six pound rifles, the cartridge selection is pretty critical because if you choose something that's going to beat the crap out of, of you when you go to the range, you're not really going to want to shoot it that much. And, and that's something that I think a lot of people do maybe right off or don't really pay a whole lot of attention to. You go and you buy a rifle. Typically, this is how it works. You go, you buy a rifle. You go and buy a couple of different boxes of ammo. You go to the range. You shoot a few rounds. You know, you typically don't do a barrel break in. You shoot a few rounds of whatever factory ammo you bought. You adjust your scope. You zero it for that particular box of ammo. And then you pretty much go hunting with it. And then once a year, you pull it out of the safe. You're probably going to go shoot it a couple times, just make sure it's still zeroed. And you're just going to do that. Right. That That's probably the vast majority of the people who purchase rifles to go hunt with. That's what they're going to do. And, and especially if you get a cartridge that's going to beat you to death at the range, you, 
you're definitely not going to want to go shoot it a whole lot. And in my opinion, again, just my opinion, the more you shoot your rifle, the better marksman you will become. Now, that's not to say that you, if you just go out and you do a bunch of mag dumps and you shoot, you know, 100 rounds through the gun, all of a sudden you're a better marksman. No, that just means you possibly wasted a lot of ammunition, a lot of money, and a lot of time. But if it's focused on actually being a better marksman, improving your overall marksmanship skills, the way you hold the rifle, the way you manage your recoil, the way you pull the trigger, and you do those those things over and over and again, over and over again, repeatedly and consistently, then you can improve your marksmanship skills, right? And, and having a cartridge that allows you to do that, that's not too terrible on recoil, that's something I think will help improve you overall as sort of like a shooter. And then also, uh, also uh, as a marksman, also as a hunter, right? When you get in the woods, um, because you're not going to be as, uh, you're not going to be recoil sensitive and maybe flinching prior to the shot and all that other stuff that comes with heavy recoiling cartridges. So that's something that you really need to be mindful of in, in this, in this weight range. Uh, the 6.5 Creedmoor, I feel like, just me personally, is probably the perfect cartridge for anything under an elk, in my opinion. And you can definitely, you can kill massive animals with that cartridge. You put the, you, you get a well-built bullet, you put it in the right spot, it'll kill anything you shoot at. Okay, just bottom line. Um, and, and so that... For the vast, again, vast majority of people that probably watch this channel, watch these videos, that's going to be more than enough to get the job done. A 6.5 Creedmoor. It's not going to recoil too bad, especially in a, even in a five and a half pound rifle. The recoil is definitely manageable. Um, but when you step up to something like a 270, now this thing does punch you pretty decent. Um, when I was shooting it the other day at the range, I mean, it's, it's a noticeable increase in recoil over the 6.5 Creedmoor. So that's something that you have to take into account, right? And especially when you're getting down into these lightweight rifle setups. Now, the I wanted to do this for comparison purposes because, you know, these rifles are set up exactly the same. So I have Tally lightweight, low one inch rings. Uh, they're the, the mount and the rings together, right? It's just integrated. Um, Exact same rings on both of these, right? One's made for the Tico, one's made for the Kimber. Uh, so there's that difference, but they're one inch. They are low rings and the exact same scopes are on both rifles. It's the Leupold VX Freedom 2-7 to seven by 33, uh, which I think, in my opinion, is just about the perfect um, magnification range and overall scope dimensions and everything for this type of, of hunting rig, right? Something lightweight, seven power, more than enough for all the hunting and shooting that I'll be doing. Um, and that's a good range, two to seven. So, so the weight on these, uh, again, I've already said what, what they have listed on their websites for just the bare stock rifles, but for mine and, and for these two, um, uh, the Kimber, as it sits right there, it's again, it's unloaded, so the weight would go up slightly once you add in the, the ammo. Um, you're talking 6.314 pounds. And that's, if you wanna con if you want to go in ounces, because we're talking, that's literally the difference that we're talking about here is ounces now. 101.024 ounces for the Kimber. For the Tika T3X Superlight in 270, uh, the weight is slightly heavier, 6.883 pounds, which is 110.128 ounces. So you're talking roughly a nine ounce difference. So a half pound difference, essentially, uh, just over a half pound difference between these two rifles as they sit. Now, a lot of that's going to come in with the action length, um, adding some weight to it there on the Tika. The Tika is already a little bit heavier anyway, uh, but that will add some some weight to the uh, to the equation. And when you're getting into again, I, I want to go back to the whole price thing. The reason I wanted to look at these two is because of that price point. They offer that lightweight 
package or the, the desired lightweight, you know, hunting setup for a rifle at, again, somewhat of a budget in air quotes price because the, the Kimber, so I went and looked at Sportsman's Warehouse. That was the only place I went and looked at a price. So you guys find it cheaper somewhere else, have at it. But Sportsman's Warehouse has the Kimber listed at $819.99 and the Tika T3X Superlight at $849.99. So $820 for the Kimber, $850 for the Tika. So $30 difference between the price. The Kimber's a slightly lighter weight um, setup. But again, you're talking nine ounces, less than half a pound between the two that I have here and the configuration that I have them in. Now, so the, the pro there, in my opinion, the, the pro goes to the Kimber in terms of overall weight. Um, both have adjustable triggers. And you can see that there are noticeable differences in that trigger shape. Uh, so really it's just whichever one you, you feel is gonna fit your, uh, I guess, desired outcome better. Uh, I haven't really noticed an issue shooting either one, uh, to be honest with you. I like both, both are adjustable. I don't know the exact range of adjustability on that because I haven't messed with either one. They've been great right out of the box. I think Kimber's website says that they tried to set theirs at like three and a half pounds from the factory. And, and I've had no issues with it, no desire to change it. Um, and probably won't change it actually. Uh, I've re I really enjoy that trigger. Same thing on the Tika, I have no desire to adjust that one either. Now, some of the differences, you know, there's a $30 price difference. And so where you might see that $30 price difference in terms of value, in my mind, really there's, uh, what you're looking at is there's some, some slot modular capabilities to this stock. You can, you can actually adjust, um, this grip here. So you can actually make it a little bit wider, a little bit more narrow. They sell these separately. So it just comes with the one that it comes with from the factory. And then you actually have to purchase them separately. So, eh, not the biggest fan of that because I, I that really is, is, is a non-issue for me. Um, I don't have any issues with the grip that it came with. That's, perfectly fine for the hunting and, and shooting that I do. So for me, I don't really know that that's actually a selling point. If you're charging a little bit more for the rifle up front to begin with, it's slightly heavier than the Kimber. And then on top of that, you have to pay extra to even get a grip to begin with um, to make the adjustment. Eh, I don't really know if that's a selling point for me. Um, and there's also a way that you can uh, adjust the fore end slightly on this as well. I, I didn't really look into it. I just saw it on their website. That's a possibility as well. So, um, that's pretty much what you're, what you're getting there on the mag. Uh, one of the, one of the things I really like about the Kimber is the flush fit magazine, right? So it's flush with the, uh, with the stock. You can tell the Tika, it's got a little, it's got a slight overhang, which it's not bad, um, but I don't know. Me, I just, I prefer that flush fit mag for a hunting application. It's, and the Tika, I, I like how it is rounded and everything. So if it's not gonna be flush fit, you know, at least there's no sharp edges, nothing's getting hung up on it, anything like that. So um, I do like that part of the Tika. If you are gonna have a magazine that's not flush fitting, then yeah, it definitely needs to be something like that where it's as low profile as you could possibly get it. now. I will mention one of the things I dislike about this Tika is this mag release. It's, I'm not really gonna be able to get it on camera that well, but man, that is such a shallow area depression for a mag release. I mean, you you can't, it's, it's, yeah, it's almost impossible to get on camera here, but like there's almost very little room, right, to get your, finger in there to release that mag. Now, it, it releases, you know, no problem. Um, but the Kimber, on the other hand, you see that there's a there's a, a deeper depression that you're able to get in and actually, you know, release that magazine. Um, 
So I like that better because again, in hunting situations, you, you might have gloves on or, or anything like that. So for me, just having that little bit of extra room in the Kimber uh, to, to be able to release the mag. And again, I'm not sure why you would be releasing the mag, right? If you're going to be doing a reload, I mean, you got three rounds, it's, it's three plus one. So you can have one in the chamber, three in the mag. Not really sure you're doing that in a hunting application anyway. Um, but it is just something to to take note of that there is a slight difference in, in the way you can, uh, or the amount of room that's afforded to you to drop those mags. Again, that's it at this point, at this price point also, now you're just nitpicking, right? Like if you go and watch the backfire, I think it's backfire TV, uh, where he talks about the things that he doesn't like about the, I think it's the Tika T3, um, rifle, some of the shortcomings and stuff. You know, I think he talks about the stock lines and that type of stuff and the, the comb height and how it's more of a traditional stock. I, I actually like that. That doesn't bother me at all. Um, so some of the stuff that he points out might not be some of the stuff that I point out, right? It's such an individualized and personal setup when it comes to the, the perfect rifle for you. Uh, one thing that is noticeably different between these two, the weight, not so much, right? right? There's a half pound difference between the two. You pick up both of them, you you don't really notice that half pound right off the bat. Um, but man, the, the texturing on this Tika stock is very aggressive. Um, and in my opinion, it's, yeah, I mean, it's way better than the Kimber. This Kimber is, the texturing here is, it doesn't really serve a purpose in my opinion. It's not gonna really improve my grip. The Tika, it will. That that's that was a noticeable difference between the two, uh, so I really like that. The Tika does have a fluted barrel, so if you're into that, it does have a fluted barrel. Both are free floated, so I mean no issues there. On the Kimber, I do like the fact that you've got stainless uh, sling studs there. This one not on the Tika, but whatever. That's that's more or less personal preference. Now, one of the big things that people like to argue about online at least, is control round feed versus push feed. That's probably, in all honesty, that's probably the major difference between these two rifles, right? There's not much of a weight difference. There's not much of a price difference. Um, you're not really getting much more with one setup versus the other, right? One manufacturer versus the other. Uh, they're both going to shoot great. Uh, especially as a hand loader, man. It's, I know the Kimber has a MOA um, accuracy guarantee. I'm pretty sure the Tika does as well. But the Kimber is control round feed. The Tika is a push feed. So for those of you that like to debate that topic, feel free to just have at it in the comments and try to explain which one's better for which purpose. You hear a lot of this really applies, or you hear a lot of it uh, discussed like when it comes to hunting dangerous game. People go to Africa do a lot of uh, dangerous game hunting, you'll see a ton of people go, hey, control around feed all the way. Because in theory, it, you should almost never have a malfunction of the action, you, sh you know, a jam or a failure to feed another cartridge with a control round feed action, right, design. And you'll see that sometimes people are like, oh no, I, you know, hey, I knew a guy, right, my brother's, second cousin, third uncle, twice removed, right? He had that, there was that one time where he was getting charged and and, and the control round feed, he, he couldn't get a follow-up shot because it failed. You're going to have that. I mean, it's it's not an absolute. You can't say 100% that it's reliable every single time without fail. I mean, things happen, right? Things break. So, but from just, again, the research I've done, some of the articles I've read, when it comes to big game hunting and reliable feeding and knowing that it will feed, um, they tend to go with a control round feed for that reason. And the push feed design, that was really, I think that was kind of introduced maybe by Remington, possibly. Again, historians, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and that's a, that's a design that's very prevalent, like Remington 700 clone type actions. Uh, Remington 700 Action, Savage, a lot of those major manufacturers, Mossberg, a lot of those guys are going to be push feed. Push feed's cheaper to, it's cheaper to manufacture, bottom line. Control round feed rifles are more expensive. They just are. It's a, um, it's a more costly action to, to manufacture. Um, but supposedly there's better reliability in it. 
Now, whether that's, that holds up in the field, I don't know. Uh, I've never had an issue either way, push feed or control around feed. I've never had an issue with a follow-up reload or anything like that with either action type. So um, you can debate that in the comments. But that's that's really, in my opinion, the big difference that you're going to see between these two rifle makes and, and uh, the offerings that they have. You know, again, $30 price difference. You're paying a little more for the Tika. Uh, at at least at Sportsman's Warehouse, at least. Now, when I picked this up, this rifle was seven forty nine ninety nine over at Mister Big Guns in Huntsville. So, you know, prices have, I'm sure have gone up since then. Like I said, Sportsman's Warehouse is about eight twenty. This one uh, picked up actually from Cabela's uh, for seven hundred bucks, six ninety nine ninety nine. It was in their used gun section, but it had never been fired. It had never. I mean, it was still brand new. Uh, screws were still in the. Uh, uh, their the little set screws were still in the the slots for your scope mounts and everything. I mean, it, it was it had never been fired, so it was it was still brand new. But I so I got it for a pretty sweet deal. Um, yeah, so the, that's the the control round feed, the feeding um, portion of the rifle. That's really, in my opinion, at least, that's your major difference. That's what sets these two apart from each other. Uh, you're going to have great accuracy out of both. Um, especially if you hand load. And then if you're looking for a wider option in terms of cartridges you can pick, then you're going to need to go with Tika. Tika offers like 13 different cartridges in this platform. Kimber only offers, I think, eight maybe. So it, it's, yeah, that's another major difference that you just need to decide for yourself. So but I'm going to have some more follow-up videos of this, have some range footage as well. So you guys hang around uh, for some follow-up videos, and we'll just, yeah, I'll keep posting some more thoughts about this stuff. Let me know down in the comments which one you would prefer to have. Would nine ounces really make that big of a difference for you? Or are you going to go with a Made in Finland over Made in America rifle? Which one would you choose? So that's it. We'll leave it, uh, we'll leave it here. We'll catch you all next time. Y'all have a good one.